Updating your decor to bring fall into your home can be expensive, but today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to recreate high-end looking decor using items from the Dollar Tree. These Kirkland dupes turned out so good and I'm so excited to share them with you. On this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. This is the inspo piece for DIY number one. I headed to Dollar Tree to find the supplies that I needed for today's projects. I found this little pumpkin and I quickly removed the tag, jute twine, and the metal leaf. But for the metal leaf, <laughs> I did have to get the pliers out to do that part. It wouldn't, it just didn't pull out very easily, but that's okay. Now this is going to shock you or at least it shocked me, but all of the paper came off this pumpkin so easily. I didn't have to wet it. I didn't have to use a rag or anything. It just all kind of came off. I don't know. Christmas miracle. Here are the three colors that I'm using. And you're going to start off with a base coat of your lightest color. And I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I always have to be careful of Captain getting in the way. But once that paint is dry, I'm taking a small piece of painter's tape and I'm using it as a spacer. I'll add additional strips of the painter's tape horizontally. And then I just continue to use that small piece of painter's tape as a spacer and add additional strips. Next, take your darker color, and in this case, I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant, and paint over the open spaces, you know, where the tape isn't. Before the paint dries, remove the pieces of tape, but keep the tape because you're gonna need it again in just a second. Pulling off the tape up and revealing that crisp line, it's like literally one of my favorite things. <laughs> Um, we're going to repeat the process of putting the tape down, but in the opposite direction. And I turn my pumpkin on the side because I, I just think it makes it easier to put the tape line straight. But just remember to use that small piece of tape as your spacer and make sure to press the tape firmly down. And here's a great tip, a Lisa lesson, if you will. Mark where the lines are. You can see what I'm doing here. And I'm placing lines on each side of the paint line and then putting an X on the area that didn't get previously painted. Just trust me on this, this is going to help you, but you can kind of see how I'm just kind of carefully trying to put them as exactly as I can. Taking that same color you just used, and in my case it's that elephant color, you're going to paint over all the open areas. And this time we're going to leave those strips of painter's tape on, and after it's dry you're going to add back in those other strips of painter's tape that I told you to keep because this is why you're hanging on to them <laughs> because we're using them. Now use those lines and the X's that you wrote earlier as your guide so you can tell where to put the tape back on. Now take your darkest color and for this project I'm using home deco chalk paint in the color intense. No it's rich black. <laughs> it is an intense color. Anyways after you've done that carefully and I mean carefully because you don't want to mess it up this late in the game. Remove all of the tape, and then you're just going to touch up as needed. And as you can see, I did have a couple spots that I needed to touch up. Looks like we have both supervisors on duty for this part. Um, this tree awards came from Dollar Tree, and they're metal. And I've seen other videos where they have other variations now in the stores, but I had these on hand from last year in my stash. And of course, I'm using the word thankful. Because it's metal, I was concerned about the paint, like I, I thought it would slip off or something. So I'm taking my finger sander and roughing it up a bit, and then I'm adding a layer of Mod Podge to hopefully give it some extra grip. And I was trying two different colors, and I ended up using the terracotta color, and I'm using a sponge applicator. I got it from Dollar Tree just to kind of paint it on. I'm more kind of like dabbing up and down, kind of, almost like a stencil, I guess. And then I'm removing the stem that was there. I'm cutting that off because I wanted to add something that looked more like the inspo piece. So I used my little scraper thing to kind of score it. And then I cut it off with some scissors, but don't use your good scissors. This is part of a branch that I got out in nature. I actually don't have any trees right now on my property. So I had to go on a scavenger hunt to find what I needed. And I had cut a slit, but it wasn't wide enough. And I thought I better add the word thankful on the front before I mess with the stem because once I put that stem on it won't lay flat. And I used my handy dandy miter saw to cut a bigger slat or slot I guess and then I used some hot glue to attach it to the pumpkin. 
instead of raffia, I'm using that hula skirt and you know, I keep wanting to call it a hula hoop skirt, but anyways, it's not that. It's just a hula skirt and I use that to make the bow at the top. Y'all, this really turned out so, so good, but let's talk numbers. Kirkland's original piece was $16.99. I bought the pumpkin for $1.25. The hula skirt, which you can use multiple times, was $1.25. The metal words, which I have two left over, were $1.25 for a grand total of $3.75. So you would save about 78% making it yourself. Okay, so I'm not counting paint though, or hot glue because I have those on hand all the time. I always have those. And then of course I'm not counting the stem because that came from nature. So 375, it's a pretty good deal. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Here is the inspo for our next project. I got this square sign at Dollar Tree. And the funny thing about Dollar Tree is not all the Dollar Trees have the same stuff. Then you have to run around to like six or seven ones to find the good stuff. And luckily, I live close to a bunch of different ones, but I mean, come on, Dollar Tree. <laughs> Gas ain't cheap. But anyways, I'm painting the inside of this sign with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I know a lot of people use spackle, but I'm using some joint compound to fill in the holes at the top of the sign. And I'm just trying to press it in and kind of smooth it over. I did use some painter's tape on the back of the holes so that the joint compound wouldn't just ooze through the back. Like, well, there's a word for you, ooze. It's kind of like using the word moist. I mean, it just sounds gross. <laughs> Anyways, um, once that is dry, I'm just taping off the inside so I can paint the frame. Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color charcoal is what I'm using for this project. Before it is completely dry, I'm pulling back the painter's tape. And I've used some painter's tape to block off the middle area and I'm using a much thinner washi tape to create some areas that will be lines on my project. I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color celery. And once that paint is dry, <laughs> there's, it's a little harder to tell, but I'm taking a strip of washi tape, like a really thin strip, and I'm placing it kind of halfway on the celery color I just painted. And then I'm adding another strip of the washi tape to create another line or, you know, basically I'm creating an area to paint. And I paint it with terracotta paint and pull the tape up while it's still wet, of course. I did cut out the words using my Cricut, but you absolutely could trace them on and then paint them and get a similar effect. I'm just adding the decals to my favorite paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. One of the best things about the paper transfer tape is that it doesn't lift off paint from your project. And I found that a lot of the other transfer tapes are just too sticky. This one works great though. Anyways, I'm over here just measuring and adding the decals to the project. I love the simplicity of this project and I think it turned out great, but let's talk about numbers. The original price of this is a whopping $64.99. And I don't know why, because on the website it says it's 17.7 by 17.7. So seems kind of spendy in my opinion, but what do I know? <laughs> so mine, I think is an eight by five, 8.5 by 8.5. So that is half the size, but y'all, the sign was $1.25. And even if I guess, and I say I spent a quarter on vinyl, it still only cost me $1.50. Save 97% if you do what I did. And I think mine turned out really cute. Hey y'all, just popping in here to say hi. I hope you're enjoying today's video so far. And if you are, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all the things. But I also wanted to share about a group that I have on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. And I run that group with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. And we have tons of friends in there and we're sharing projects that we're working on, getting advice, tips, and all that kind of stuff. So um, be sure and check out that link in the description box below. And the fourth Friday of every month, I host an open challenge playlist with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. We're kind of besties, but um, we host that together. And if you are a creator and want to join, send me a DM and we'll get you connected. All right, y'all back to the video. Wow, y'all. Here's the last inspo for today's projects. Spoiler alert, DIY number three turns out really good. <laughs> really pretty good. I got this little sign last year at Hobby Lobby and it was 90% off, so it only cost me 40 cents. And I took off the hardware from the back and of course I saved it because you never know, I might need it for a future project. I painted the inside because I didn't need a 4th of July sign for this. And I painted it with Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and it did take a couple of coats to cover the words. And I wanted to show you Hobby Lobby has their fall on sale right now for 50% off and you can get some similar really cute signs for not too much money. 
See how that's cute, that's cute. They have different colors, it's cute. This plaid print is from Hobby Lobby and I got it on sale. And I'm just cutting it down to fit inside the sign. And if you couldn't find the plaid paper, you could use really anything, any type of print paper you want, or you could use fabric. And they have some really great options to choose from. I just used a Dollar Tree glue stick to put the paper in the sign, but you could also use Mod Podge or something like that as well. And I found this cute little sign at Target, the Target dollar spot, and I was going to use that, but I didn't want to add it to the little sign, and I already, already had that, and um, I didn't want to make a frame for it, so I went back to my original plan, but I wanted you all to kind of see my thought process behind choosing what I do for a project. I designed this little print in Canva and printed it out on tissue paper. And if you want to try this, all you have to do is take a piece of cardstock and tape the tissue paper to it and then run it through your printer like regular. I will have a link to a free graphic that I made for y'all in my description box in case y'all are wanting to try to do it. And I'm just taking a really thin coat of Mod Podge and an even coat and laying the tissue paper on top and then pressing gently and just pushing out little wrinkles. Gently though. Now I started to paint the beads using the masking tape method and that's where you put a piece of masking tape sticky side up so that it holds the beads. But it wasn't really working out that great so I put them on a skewer and I finished staining them with Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I felt that they looked way too dark for the frames of the pictures so I went back in with some Waverly Chalk paint in the color Plaster and after that dried I took my finger sander and I distressed them just a bit. And because the frames weren't exactly matchy-matchy the same color, I took some more of the plaster color and dry brushed around the frame. I strung the bead onto the beads onto some twine and then I attached it to the sign. And I made a tassel by wrapping the twine around my hand around 20 times. And then I took another piece of the twine and tied it near the top to create the tassel head. And then I cut the bottom loops and then, you know, cut the the bottoms of the tassel to even them out, kind of give it a haircut. And I tied a couple of knots to secure the bead strand on the back. And then I hot glued that little sign to the bigger sign. Y'all, I really like how this one turned out, but let's see how much this one cost me versus the Kirkland's one. With an original price of $49.99, you're gonna save about 90% if you use mostly Dollar Tree items. The largest sign that I bought was $1.25. The smaller sign was 40 cents from Hobby Lobby on clearance. The beads you can get at Dollar Tree for $1.25. The paper was 30 cents on sale at Hobby Lobby. And if you bought some twine and added in some change for the graphic I printed, you're gonna spend around $4.50. So not too bad for a super cute decor piece. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. Really enjoyed the company and I hope you enjoyed the crafts that I made today. Tell me in the comments below which one is your favorite or if you have a dupe that you want me to try, let me know that as well. And don't forget my Facebook group. Don't forget if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. Bye!